Welcome back to the Policy Viz Podcast. I'm your host, John Schwabish. If, like me, you're interested in helping a new generation become familiar with data and data visualization, this is the episode for you. I talk with author and dad, Gulrez Khan, about his new book, Drawing Data with Kids, where he walks kids through a story and also how to work with and visualize data. It's a really interesting approach to think about how we can engage children in working with data and visualizing their data. So we talk about the book itself. We talk about lots of other ways around thinking about educating t kids when it comes to data. So I hope you'll enjoy this week's episode of the show. So we'll get right to it. Here is my conversation with Gulrez Khan about his new book, Drawing Data with Kids. Hey, Gulrez, good to see you in person rather than just, you know, trading emails. Thanks for coming on the show. How are you? Thank you, John. It's good to finally be able to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, thanks for all the feedback uh, and all those uh, conversations offline. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm, be, uh, I'm happy to help. I'm, I'm excited to have uh, one more book in the, I don't know, fairly small literature, I guess, on data viz for kids, right? Like, there's not a there's not a ton out there. There's some stuff on data for kids and like uh -huh. counting and, and that sort of thing, but not really data visualization. So this is this is exciting. So I want to get to the book and I want to talk about your process and 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 you know your goals with it and everything. But I want to start with your background. So hmm. you know what, what is your what is your day look like and and um, how did you end up deciding uh, this is the book that I want to you know I want to write to start. Yep. So I can talk about myself. Uh, I'm father of three beautiful kids. And that's how I start all my intros because we have got all our titles, work, job and whatnot. But uh, you spend a little bunch of time. I'm working from home and uh, very fortunate. Like uh, I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of learned people. Uh, I've been in the U.S. for the last 17 years, originally from India. And uh, I spent... Uh, like kind of born and brought up in Microsoft so around 10 to 15, uh, around 14 years uh, in Microsoft. And then right now, last four years, I've been in Bay Area working as a data science leader at PayPal. So that's been my journey. But again, as I said, like uh, very fortunate uh, to have worked with uh, many people like uh, from all over the world and uh, Feel fortunate to speaking to a person, learned person like you. <laughs> well, well, thanks. So, so what what brought you then to thinking about a, a, a project? I'm sure at the beginning it was sort of a project, but but ultimately to a book about data visualization for kids, which sounds very much different than a day to day job of working at PayPal. Um, so, how did that come about? Yeah. So that is like, we all have our different intersections, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if I have a title of a data science leader, I have a title of a dad. And then like uh, those things, like uh, if you think of uh, my daily routine, right? So I live and uh, breathe data in all my day job, right? So and then, like, at the end of the day, like, I come and I sit with my kids, uh, my wife, like, she takes care of all those things. Uh, we are homeschooling our kids mm -hmm. right now. And uh, when I come, we read stories and other things. So it's very hard for you to not bring data home mm -hmm. if you are so passionate about data, right? So that's where, like, uh, I've been uh, reading their books and uh, I thought, uh, and I, I was telling my wife that, hey, I think there is a gap. I see like uh, we have got all these different types of books out there in our shelf. We don't have a television at home. So mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time with books and all that stuff. And uh, I was talking about this data visualization thing. Maybe we should have some kind of a data literacy for kids. And my wife said like, she's also a software engineer, mm -hmm. now a full-time mom. Uh, she said, yes, like there is a gap. So. That's where, like, the first step, right? So that's where lots of our dreams uh, gets uh, lost, right? Mm -hmm. So you talk to the first person. My wife said, yes, there is this thing. And then there is always the saying, right? So if you are looking for a book and you don't find it, write that book. Yeah. So that's where, like, uh, I thought maybe I'll start with that. 
and uh, and again like it was not to write a book right mm-hmm. i've been doing these activities uh, with my kids like uh, just spending time with them right you we were just we used to do this uh, thing over the weekend just to drawing some random things and they treat me so nicely they say okay and i'm not teaching them right yeah, so yeah. they'll bring all the crayons and then papers and then they say now draw something right and i said okay like i'm treated well so we would do those activities and they still remember like uh, hey you know what we create we drew this flower and then these mountains and all that stuff so we used to do those things and then like uh, one fine day i said okay enough of uh, flowers and mountains what about some pie charts <laughs> <laughs> so that's how like uh, and then they liked it so that's where like uh, we kept on doing those activities and i started sharing that with my office colleagues or uh, or on my social media post and people seem to like that and they said hey why don't you conduct some kind of a workshop like uh, we, our kids would be uh, learning as well mm-hmm. so i did a workshop as well and then like uh, the book is kind of a compilation of uh, those activities which i was doing with my book mm-hmm. uh, with my kids and um, the other part is like i didn't want to write the book in the format of a curriculum right yeah if you yeah. look into some kind of books you would see okay uh, uh, that hey what is data right this is how they would start this is what is data what are the different types of graphs right yeah. and then all those uh, different technical things right that's boring right so when you think from the kids perspective you get their engagement when you tell stories to them mm-hmm. right so that's where like uh, right now in the book what we have is like it's kind of a realistic fiction things that i was doing with my kids i compiled that in kind of a story format then in that within that story i'm introducing some kind of graphs mm-hmm. right? and then like that's where i have a section which we call as uh, uh, the uh, time out right mm-hmm. so that's where like you can read more about that particular graph and then at the end of the chapter every chapter there are some exercises that they can take home and do those things so again like it's not a, in a curriculum format you have fun right so it is like a, as a gift for one dad to another parent that hey read these books and then like have fun right so mm-hmm. have fun and in fun they will learn about uh, certain aspects and that's how like uh, they will remember yeah so when you yeah i mean i love that it's a it's a it's a narrative for those who are uh, who are who are watching the episode on on uh, on on youtube i've got a picture i've got the book right here uh drawing data with kids it's a picture of gurus and his daughter um with you know <laughs> all sorts of pens and paper and and color on the front you know, when you think about, as you mentioned, kids, I think, you know, the story is, is you know, so important to kids. When you think about kids, at least the ages that you're thinking about here, like, where are you, how do you think about that, right? Because, you know, a six-year-old is very different than a 12-year-old, very different than a 17-year-old, but they all are going to need in their in their their generation is going to need data right they're going to need to understand data right. so so for this how do, what are you thinking about when it comes to um, when it comes to the different ages that's a really good question and that's where i was uh, kind of struggling as well because mm-hmm. uh, i've got a uh, 11 year old who was my like uh, target person mm-hmm. who i was teaching but then along with her i've got a 6 year old and a 3 year old and they would also come with me and then kind of listen to what i'm trying to teach so that's my target audience were, is like around 7 years to 13 14 years age mm-hmm. but john like what i've uh, seen is like you have a product and then when it reaches the audience you see something else yeah. right so when I see the reviews that people wrote on Amazon or people who reached out to me later on, they say that you have written this book for kids, but uh, even as adults, mm-hmm. as beginners, we are learning from this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's not uh, limited to an age. Right? Yeah. So here you would see the unintended audience in mothers or like 
fathers who are new to this uh, data world but want to learn or like just get introduced right because if you see like there are a lot of people uh, you you must have seen like every time you put a graph in front of them or a math equation they just want to close that uh, chapter and move to the next one right right, right. they just want to flip that page but uh, with this approach like what i'm seeing is it is making them less intimidated with those graphs or those uh, data those numbers because it's in the form of uh, snakes and ladders right. right the games that they have played and they have got good memories of their childhood right now you use this in a form of creating segmentation or scatter plots and see okay which segment you want to be if you want to win mm-hmm. right and now if you can translate that to your day job or something else you can like uh, learn a lot of things yeah I, i'm i'm curious to that point so so the book kind of goes through i guess there there're separate chapters that sort of lead you in this story that get you to a chart so you get to the scatter plot you get to the the line chart the bar chart the what have you and you you as the reader are kind of prompted to draw to make your own graph in in the book and i'm and i'm curious so i have kind of two questions here so so the first question is what was your 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 thinking your inspiration behind that then the sort of broader question was i'm curious whether you thought about other ways to enable people to do that because i don't know like I'm sure there's lots of people. I, I I hesitate to write in books. I like to have my right. Like when I take notes, even in books, I feel bad about it. But like, you know, creating a book where you could, you know, cut something out or punch something out is like not easy to do from like a practical, you know, publication uh, standard. But I'm curious what your thinking was about maybe like trying trying some of these other things where you actually get people to do things, which you have in this book. But there are, you know we had unlimited time and resources and abilities, like we would probably produce something that'd be great. But so, so, so what was your thinking about, about that part of the, of the, of the, of the book project? Yeah. Can, can you repeat that question again? Yeah. So, so if, uh, so I guess the first part is what was your thinking about having the kids or the reader? I'm not going to say kids anymore. I'm going to say reader because it could be no, the reader actually drawing in the book. And then did you think about other ways that you might, or other materials or ways that you might have people sort of repeat the exercise, but not in the book itself? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's a good question. And uh, I think you also mentioned like if we had unlimited time, you could uh, experiment with other things as well. So right now, like uh, I, like for me, this is more about creating memories with your kids, just having fun. Right? Mm-hmm. Don't think about teaching. Like if you go in and I, as I'm homeschooling the kids, so the moment you go into the teaching mood, you have lost your audience, mm-hmm. right? So that's where like uh, for me, this is like just having fun with the kids. You are like uh, sitting in a garden or like and people just email me that, hey, you know what? This weekend uh, I was sitting there and my son uh, brought this book to me and then we read the stories and then we created these graphs. And like people are not just putting those things uh, on the book, in the book, like they have got separate papers as well that they are using. So if you uh, look at the first chapter, like uh, it is like there is a snore graph, right? Mm-hmm. So snore graph, uh, it's kind of a fun thing. And, but again, like uh, to tell you another incident that happened or a story, right? So uh, the other day, my uh, 11 year old, like she was reading a book about uh, birds of North America. Mm. And uh, she was reading that book, sitting on the sofa, and I was just finishing my call. And I stepped out, and then she called me. She calls me Abu. So she says, Abu, come here. I said, okay. And then I peeked into the book, and she was looking into a graph, which was uh, the sound of uh, the birds, like uh, the pitch graph, right? So you have different pitch uh, for the birds, like how loud they are and all that stuff. And based on that, uh, scientists, like they identify the species of the bird. Mm-hmm. And she was looking at it. And she was spending time looking at that graph. And uh, she says, you know what? Uh, this looks like the snore graph from your book. Mm. And like that, that was like a pat on my back. that yeah. I said, okay, wow. Well, what happened with this, John, is she is not intimidated to look at a complex graph 
that she would see in her uh, daily routine going forward right mm-hmm. so even if the book doesn't work for me like no one buys but this thing which happened right yeah. removing that intimidation about the graphs or data i think that's what i want to achieve with this book mm-hmm. and uh, that's like what's happening right so there is this snore graph thing similar to that in the exercises there is this roar graph right how it uh, sounds like uh, animals make there is a meow meow graph yeah and things on those right and people are sending me those pictures which they are creating with their kids and saying that they hey we are having so much fun because uh, you if you talk to the kids like 6 year 7 year my 3 year old and uh, you talk about oh what kind of sound uh, elephant makes or cat makes dog makes mm-hmm. they do that they enjoy it but now you translate that into a graph and you are still having fun right. and they are learning without even realizing that they've been taught <laughs> this yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah do you so so the way i mean the way that you've tried to create this kind of entrance into data for kids is through things that they're familiar with with I, which i think you know mm-hmm. a lot of elementary school teachers would would agree with and i'm curious when you think about your your day-to-day job or your wife's day-to-day job and helping adults who are professionals get more familiar more comfortable with data do you think it works in the same way that it needs to be familiar in a in a non-work setting or do you think the way to get people engaged is it it needs to be sort of like work dependent or people are just be like look I'm an adult I don't have time for this like I'm I'm not going to be making you know <laughs> I'm not going to be drawing things of my of my commute like so how do you, how do you feel about like yeah br- I guess lower just the way you are with the kids lowering the barrier to data literacy for adults yeah so i i i think it helps on that like uh, i'm trying to think of different examples right so you talked about uh, drawing my commute right mm-hmm. so there are a lot of data artists these days like uh, you've got georgia lupi and then there's stephanie pozevic mm-hmm. and a uh, lot of those are drawing data projects right mm-hmm. so which we are as adults we are learning and we are loving those projects there are also some kind of a coloring books like uh, for adults which are coming out which helps them like uh, meditate or things on those lines right mm-hmm. so it's uh, it doesn't have to be complicated and again like uh, talking about the kind of uh, courses or uh, the tutorials that we get like for example i've been a data science leader my entry to data science uh, started with a few examples like uh, if you think of uh, clustering right so i still remember when i was uh, learning this thing clustering you see the example which is commonly used as for the data set of uh, uh, the iris flower mm-hmm. right and uh, the different types of uh, species of that flower right so there is this setosa and all those uh, mm-hmm. other things i cannot pronounce those things <laughs> and uh, i cannot like uh, write the spelling of those things so when i was learning this thing like it was for me not coming from a western world or like not too much in the botany uh, first i need to understand the domain that hey what is this yeah. uh, thing and then i was talking to another uh, uh, my neighbor from google and he mentioned like when he was uh, in the college he did his masters here from the us but then one fine day his professor realized like there are a lot of uh, people from subcontinent and uh, they are familiar with cricket right? mm-hmm. so cricket is a game like baseball and uh, it's like a religion over there mm-hmm. so instead of uh, using these uh, data sets he brought the data set of cricket mm-hmm. and now like uh, the audience was interested they knew the domain they knew their superstars right yeah so with this if you lower the barrier you make it fun right the the other day i looked into a what a, a graph someone created with this baby shark uh, uh, video mm-hmm. or like a, you know like a how popular that uh, uh, rhyme is right mm-hmm. and then like with that like it was so fun right and uh, it was kind of a sanky diagram which says okay from uh, baby shark like uh, the 
number of times they repeat the word bb and then shark yeah and now like you open your mind but if right. you start you have those jargons and this is the unfamiliar territory you shut your ma- uh, mind right mm-hmm. so that's why like i think simplifying it makes it more easy and welcoming mm-hmm. yeah so i think uh, that helps yeah it 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 is interesting that um that we sort of maybe as human beings we lose that that I don't know that that part of our ability to stay open to to learning these new things, but I like this idea of simplifying it to to keep it to keep it open to keep it uh, um, uh, keep it uh, interesting for people to to learn. I'm curious about you mentioned your your you people are sending you photos. Um, I'm curious to hear more about those those other experiences that you are uh, either uh, hearing about from readers or I'm sure. Uh, you know, your, your kids, friends, you know, either using the book or, or exploring data. So, so can you tell us a few of those, a few of those stories? Yeah. So the other thing, like, uh, which I, I, like, as I was talking about that iris flower, right. Mm -hmm. Now, when I think of those things, I, and I work here, here in the corporate world, we think of, uh, we localize our products based on different markets, Mm -hmm. right. So if I have got uh, this product uh, over here in US, I would localize it. And maybe like if I'm creating ads, right? If I create an ad for uh, a coffee or like, let's say Starbucks, for example, Mm -hmm. the ad that I would uh, show in the US would look different from what I would show in India. Mm -hmm. You have uh, different stars, uh, different celebrities, and the way I'll talk to the audience will be different. But when I look into the books, right, mm-hmm. you've got lots of book in your bookshelf, uh, I can see right now. But uh, this is like same book mm-hmm. that a person in the U.S. is reading and same a person in India or Pakistan or some other country they would be reading. Now, what I have always missed is uh, I've always, uh, like when I read about uh, certain topics, technical stuff, it has always been like uh, some like Tom, Dick, and ha- Harry, like they yeah. are the main characters. Right? And uh, when I read these books with my kids, I see this is missing, right? They are not able to identify themselves in those books. Mm-hmm. If you are not able to identify, you are less attractive. Right? Yeah. So your question was like, what are the things that I'm hearing from my like uh, readers? Mm-hmm. So the other things that I'm reading is like uh, there are people who are finding it more Uh, relatable right Mm. so for example the character over here is different than you what you would see in your usual uh, life and the stories like uh, it's uh, you've got uh, uh, different things right so parathas right so for example paratha i could have called it as a pancake Mm -hmm. but again i wanted to call it as this yeah because that's where like uh, i see that those things missing right so the name Parisa, right? So it's a different name that you wouldn't see. So one reader, like she reached out and she messaged that, hey, I love the book in the story. My daughter and me, we were reading and we were able to identify ourselves. Like there was like, a, uh, it's like a, the sketches and other things. You have got a hijab, which the character is wearing. Mm-hmm. And then she's able to identify with her daughter that, hey, you know what? this is how we are and then so they are able to see themselves they see the representation so i think that has also helped yeah so that's another thing which uh, uh, came out yeah yeah it's interesting to think about i mean I, I love this idea of being able of people being able to see themselves not just represented in the book as you mentioned uh i'm guessing this is the drawing is 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 your daughter in, in, in the book wearing a hijab. And it, so not just seeing themselves in the book, but also seeing themselves in the data. And I wonder yes. when it comes to kids, how do you help them see themselves in the data? You mentioned, you mentioned the very beginning, like the sounds of, of, of the sounds different animals make, which I think is a, you know, is a great one. Right. So 
but but how do you then um or or you know sort of create these exercises or these examples where kids see themselves in the data right they see their age or their friends or their experiences um so yeah, yeah. I, i'll just i'll just leave it, i'll leave that question there yeah 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 so when you look into those exercises right so the data that i have used is from the board games for example mm-hmm. right we are playing scrabble we are using the scores of uh, the games and uh, what came out right now if i go and i to show her like if i have to introduce uh, uh, data to my 11 year old and i say hey parisa come on uh, let's uh, look into this uh, sales graph or uh, something right mm-hmm. she's not interested but now yeah. like we just finished a nail biting game of scrabble mm-hmm. she lost to her 7 year old brother <laughs> and now like she's pulling her hair and <laughs> said why did this happen right and now like she is like she has got her skin in the game mm-hmm. and now like if i say okay come on in let's see like uh, what happened and now she's interested right. and she's saying oh no this is the round when I, my score was lower but mm-hmm. then like she was seeing the data in just different rounds let's add that and make it as a cumulative score Mm-hmm. and you create a line graph and quickly she is able to see okay the dip happened and this is where it's like uh, she lost right, right? so right. this is like make the data more relatable mm-hmm. compared to like what we see in our regular graphs that we try to teach uh, to everyone right mm-hmm. so so that's where like i think they will see it more relatable and um, the game of snakes and ladder right so again like these exercises are something that sh- since i was doing with my kids uh, so it's uh, it's uh, those things that came out right yeah so i think uh, we need to make it more relatable and uh, whatever they are seeing in their day job uh, not day job like in their day yeah. you bring that uh, in the form of data yeah yeah and don't teach them right yeah. right you, you, right you, it's like when they learn algebra they don't know that they're learning algebra right you say you have right. three apples how many more do you need to add to get to 12 apples they don't know they're doing algebra exactly. right yeah right um right. tell me about the process of actually writing the book and and illustrating the book because um for those again I'll hold it up for those who 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 don't have it it is um it is illustrated so it's not uh you know again if you're if you're watching this you can you can sort of see like the book is is illustrated has I think it has like two different fonts in it but it's but it is illustrated it's not just like a straight a straight book. So tell me about that that process of of writing it and then and then having it illustrated or illustrating it yourself. Yeah. So writing the book uh, like I had this idea like it has to be in the form stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, again like uh, I drew a lot of inspiration from uh the there is a book called life of fred so this is like if you have not seen it uh, i've called it out in the uh, acknowledgement section so in that book like uh, eric uh, like uh, i'm forgetting i'm not able to pronounce his last name but uh, th- that has been a very popular book and uh, this is like uh, they have a similar format of like uh, Uh, teaching uh, introducing maths to kids right mm-hmm. so with the in the form of stories and but again like they didn't have something for data so that was uh, a lot that that gave me a lot of inspiration and uh, the other things that i have over there is it's more about uh, a realistic fiction like you will see the different chapters like for example the game of snakes and ladders which i'm talking about like the other day i was just uh, uh going to my home office closing the door and it was the weekend and my kids they ran and they uh, pulled me and they said hey today is weekend you have to play with us go and go and uh, work and i said okay and i asked them what game do you want to play and they say snakes and ladders i said okay let's do snakes and ladders but back of my mind i was always thinking okay uh, i want to write a chapter and my kids are here so what can i do mm-hmm. so that's where like things happen okay let's play this thing and my son was uh, getting upset that he's being bitten by too many snakes so maybe let's uh, make that in a form of story and then 
use that data. So those are the chapters that we have. And uh, again, like uh, these are fun chapters. Uh, some of the reviews that I've got, uh, they mentioned that uh, people are enjoying this also as a storybook. Mm-hmm. Right? So they are just uh, reading the stories as well. So so that's uh, that. Now, and again, like I did some uh, uh, research uh, with uh, the other parents and like people like you who provided good feedback of what might, what may not work. And uh, there were a lot of other chapters as well, which I had in the book which I cut based on the feedback that I have. And that is another, uh, so this is going to be a series now. Mm, uh, great. So, so this is like, there is another one coming up. Yeah. So, so those are the things. And now like uh, when I thought of a book, like again, like uh, it's uh, going to be a kid's book. Right? Mm-hmm. So if it's going to be a kid's book, how can you make it uh, more fun? Yeah. Here I have not used lots of colors uh, again, like as a data visualization practitioner like we try to (laughs) limit the use of colors as well so here uh, i've created those illustrations Uh, this is like from mid journey and other tools Mm -hmm. that i've used and uh, and that helped me i wanted to uh, like uh, since i was writing even before like uh, when i talk about one thing which i didn't mention right this is a book something which i self-published right now, when I was uh, thinking about uh, writing a book and I reached out to three publishers and uh, one of them said yes. And uh, But again, like uh, if I look into the ROI, that wasn't that much, right? So, and now, and I also, I didn't want to curb the creativity perspective, like the portion of the book, like as I mentioned about the localization and the different intersection that I was bringing in the book. Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. So that's where like a lot of things uh, came on my plate that, hey, I need to do it and I need to make it successful. So so that's where like uh, I I did the most of the stuff and like it's it's doing much better, like than way better than what I expected. Yeah. Uh, the book has gone to markets, which I have not went myself. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's it's been wonderful. That's great. That's great. Um, my last, uh, I guess my last question is, uh, and it's great to hear that there's, there's going to be more. So this is, so this is great. Um, and you've mentioned this, uh, you've talked a little bit about this with, with sort of play and not necessarily, um, having kids realize that they're learning or being taught, but I'm curious what you would think or what you would suggest, I guess, to teachers and educators and even parents about kind of teaching data viz to kids or using the book, you know, in a classroom or, or something like that. Like what, what would, I can guess what your recommendation is going to be, but what, but what would you say to a teacher that's like, Oh, I picked up this book. Maybe I use it with my kid, you know, my own kid. It looks great. How would I implement this into the classroom in a, you know, a class of 20, 25 kids, something like that. Yeah. So when I was talking about these different intersections, right? So if someone else would have written this book, it would be in a different form. Like here I bring different uh, intersections. Uh, We don't have television at home. And uh, my wife, like she is very mindful of uh, the screen time Mm -hmm. to the kids, right? So even with uh, teaching, that's how like uh, this uh, thing uh, came out, like in the form of uh, without uh, screen time, right? So right now, what I've seen in my uh, circle and outside, uh, we want our kids to be de- uh, to be like a computer literate, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone is sending their kids to coding classes and whatnot, right? Right. But again, that would be in, uh, having them sit in front of computers and whatnot. We ourselves, like we spend so much time in front of uh, these machines, right? Now. For our kids, like as they grow up, they will be spending time in front of devices. But uh, with this book, the idea is like, uh, let's have some fun. Mm-hmm. Right? If you, the moment you you can do these all these things in front of computer, and uh, that you can do like, uh, I, I see there is this book that you recently wrote, and I see in your background <laughs> about Excel. Yeah. So you can do all these things in Excel or these different tools with Python and whatnot, right? right? 
but uh, again the idea is to have fun as a family mm-hmm. or in a class right yeah the way you do it uh, without uh, digital footprints i think it will be more fun mm-hmm. and then don't tell them like one thing that didn't work for me right so people ask me that hey what didn't work for you when you were teaching mm-hmm. what didn't work for me is uh, i was doing these exercises and then uh, with them and then i said okay uh, go and do this uh, project mm-hmm. and my daughter was said no right i i don't want to do it myself yeah. she was having fun because i was there working with her right, right. so for teaching for anything right so you need to be there present and then participating like again it goes back to those weekend activities which i was talking about that my kids they bring those crayons everything and they enjoy the moment that the the dad is there and the he's drawing yeah. he's not teaching anything right you are having fun yeah so don't get rid of that element like don't go from the perspective that you want to teach but have fun as a family and then like uh, do these things uh, together yeah that's great well uh congrats on the book very excited i've got my copy uh i have my kids reading it my kids are uh as you might expect uh they're a little bit older than your kids and uh they had a dad who is deep into data biz so they're uh (laughs) (laughs) so so like my son helped me with my excel book so that's like you know getting to the next yeah to the next phase um but congrats on the book i'm excited about the the sequels coming out and um, uh, I'll put the notes to 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 uh, uh, to the book on the on the show notes page. Where can folks um, where can listeners find you, especially if they want to send you pictures of 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 using the book with their kids? Yeah, so they can connect me on LinkedIn. So uh, they can find like there are not many too many Gulrez Khan on LinkedIn <laughs> that uh, I come with uh, kind of a unique name, right? So they, they can find me uh, and uh, I would love to see like uh, if they have got any pictures or any other feedback. But uh, again, my last message would be to have fun with kids. Don't try to teach them. Just have fun and then they will learn with uh, you. That's great. Thanks, Gorez. Really appreciate you coming on the show and uh, good luck with uh, having fun with the next few books. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of the show. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I hope you'll check out Gulrez's book. I also hope you'll check out the project that I did with my colleagues at the Urban Institute Data for Kids, where we provide lots of data sources and materials, including Excel files, PowerPoint files, Google Slides, and notes for instructors and teachers on helping kids learn to be better data users and data consumers, and of course, data visualizers. So until next time, this has been the Policy of This Podcast. Thanks so much for listening.